everyone, this is Lila here with Dr. Kerry Healy, who's the former Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts and the President of Babson College, which is the world's, um, the world's most prominent for entrepreneurship education. Thank you for finishing that. <laughs> um, we're here on this amazing trip on Necker as part of Virgin Unite. Hopefully you all can hear us, so let us know if you can't. And I was just going to ask Dr. Healy some questions about her experience as Lieutenant Governor in the social innovation sector. So, Dr. Healy, you are known for your leadership on healthcare in Massachusetts. Tell us about some of the innovative things that you did in healthcare. Well, if I can back up a little bit, the whole reason why I wanted to go into politics was because I cared deeply about certain social issues. I'd been a researcher for the U.S. Department of Justice for ten, the first 10 years of my career and I looked a lot at the impact of uh, drug abuse on, on individuals, um, I looked at child abuse and neglect, I looked at um, all sorts of social issues that, that arose out of social dysfunction and, and gave rise to crime. And so even though I was writing about these and going to conferences and trying to convince people that I had great solutions that people should listen to and put into place, I realized that no one was ever going to do that. That, that once people are in power, they're way too busy to learn more about issues that are very complex, like homelessness or drug abuse or child abuse and neglect. And so if I was going to actually have any impact, I, I really needed to be in a position of power where I could make those decisions myself and set the agenda for those issues myself. And so that actually began my efforts to run for office that weren't always successful, but I knew at least I'd have a platform if I was in the, the public eye to, to talk about things I cared about and, and, and try to get action and try to make sure that people were working at it from a more informed position. So one of the things that we, we did look at a lot once we were in office was what was wrong with healthcare. And so many people had been trying to solve the healthcare issue for so long, trying to come up with innovative solutions. And what we finally did is we started asking the question, why, you know, who were the uninsured? And they weren't the people who we necessarily had imagined or that people in general imagined. They weren't all poor. For example, some people were making choices that they would rather you know, devote their income to other things and, and therefore that gave rise to the notion of an individual mandate. So that if you can contribute, you should be contributing because we all bear the healthcare um, costs of, of people's choices across uh, society. And we also saw that there was a big gap between uh, the people who were eligible for, for free health care uh, through the government and, and those who could genuinely afford it. So so even people living at as much as three times the, the, the you know federal poverty level um, were really not in a position to pay full freight for their health care. And so we had to come up with some ideas about how we could do that. And we could and we ended up creating a system that allowed everyone to be uh, insured through the private sector insurance those, except for those who were eligible for, for Medicaid, um, that, that didn't cost any more tax dollars. And, and so one of the things that uh, I personally found frustrating about the way healthcare has rolled out over time is, is that it's begun to become more of a, a, a burden on, on the taxpayer. So that's frustrating to me because I, I know that we can do it uh, in a better way and Massachusetts has been a good model for that. And so tell me, what led you to want to become the president of Babson College? <laughs> well, it's interesting. Uh, I was very fortunate to be approached by, by some people who said, look, you've been an innovator uh, in, in government. You, you've innovated. Uh, I had a nonprofit that did work in Afghanistan to uh, help promote rule of law by educating young lawyers there. Um, and, and I'd been actually, I, I'd started a TV program hoping that people would look at um, one of some of the most wonderful social innovators and, and uh, scientific innovators and, and invest in them. You know, in in, no, no, in, in the U.S. So, oh, in the US. So, so I had these different things going and, and when people came to me from Babson and said, you know, you're, you're an entrepreneur. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm just someone who's interested <laughs> in government. I'm interested in Afghanistan. I'm interested. And they said, no, 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 you actually um, have been an entrepreneur and we'd like you to come. And, and because we believe in entrepreneurs of all kinds, not just the kind that start a, a startup company, but also those who are engaged in social innovation, those who do innovative things in government, you know, those that even work innovatively within large corporations that, you know, we want to train all kinds of, of entrepreneurs. And so hopefully that's what I bring to the table at Babson.
Definitely. We've heard great things. I have one last question for you, which yeah. is, um, we talked yesterday about social innovation and social entrepreneurship. How would you define social entrepreneurship, and do you think it's different from regular entrepreneurship? Yeah, it's really interesting. I think it was very different. You know, just as co you know, there was corporate social responsibility, when corporations just felt they could give some money to charity at the end of the day, and kind of even the ledger. Um, but now, what we're all talking about here on Necker Island is this notion that you can both be profitable, uh, you can have social impact, and then in fact, organizing your company to have social impact is the way to be more profitable. That, that people today really value the values of the companies that they're investing in, and they want to know that you're treating your workers appropriately, that your supply chains are all, you know, have great integrity, and, and that you're not creating uh, environmental damage during the course of creating your product or your service. And, and so I think that this, this separation between social in innovation and social entrepreneurship and, and regular, if you will, entrepreneurship and startups is just going to disappear in the future. And, and, and the group here is a great uh, testament to the, the forward thinking nature of, of groups like Virgin Unite, mm -hmm. who have been pioneers in trying to get businesses to think differently. Absolutely. I think in the future, every business will be a benefit corporation just by right. default. So, well, it's so great to chat with you, Dr. Healy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And let us know if you have any questions in the feed. Take care, everyone.